Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to solve exercises 24 to 27 of chapter 1. Exercise 24 is an exercise on the subspace topology. So we have a matrix space X and a subset or subspace Y of X. So when I say subspace, it means that Y inherits the distance from X. So it is itself a matrix space. So we can talk in Y about open sets relative to Y, open sets, closed sets, interior closure, and so on. So all the concepts that we learn holds in this. Uh, so we have to distinguish here between two spaces, the bigger space X and the smaller space Y. And we have a subset A of Y. Okay, let A bar to the Y denote the closure of A in Y. What does this mean? A bar Y is this is the smallest closed set in Y containing A. Okay. We have to show that this set, A bar to the Y, is just the intersection of A bar with Y, where A bar, as usual, denotes the closure of A in the bigger space X. Okay. And we have something uh, similar, but a little bit different, uh, about the interior. So the interior of A, A circle, is the biggest open set contained in A, the biggest open set in X containing, contained in A. And A circle sub Y is the interior of A and Y, which means that it's the, big, the biggest open subset of Y contained in A. Okay, so we have to prove that A circle is just A circle intersected with Y. And this set is contained in the relative interior. Let us call it the relative interior of A and Y. And you have to give an example where equality fails okay, in this inclusion. Okay, so let us prove that A bar sub Y is the smallest closed subset of Y containing A. So first of all, it's a closed subset of Y because it is the intersection of a closed set in X with Y. Now, consider an arbitrary, an arbitrary closed subset of Y that contains A. So C is closed in Y. It doesn't mean that C is closed in X. But what we can say that C is the intersection of a closed set in X intersected with Y. Okay. So we can write C equals C prime intersected with Y, whereas now C prime is closed in the bigger space X. Okay. Now, since C bar is a closed subset of X that contains A, okay, because uh, C contains A and C is contained in C prime, therefore A is contained in C prime. Okay? But A bar is the smallest closed subset of X. Uh, the smallest, the smallest closed subset of X containing A. Therefore, C prime contains A bar. Okay, now we are working in X here. So when I take the intersection with Y, I get A bar intersected with Y is, is contained in C prime intersected, with y, which, is, which is just C. So what, what does this show? It shows that A bar intersected with Y, first, is a closed subset of Y containing A, and second, it's contained in any closed subset of Y containing A. So therefore, it's the smallest one, the smallest closed subset of Y containing A. And this is, by definition, just A bar of Y. So A bar intersected with Y is just what we called A bar to the Y. <clears throat> okay. Second question. Why do we have first equality? This is trivial. This is just a, the a theory, because A circle is contained in A, and A is contained in Y, so A circle is contained in Y, and therefore, when I take the intersection, I get the smaller one, the smallest one, which is A circle. Okay, so this proves the first part. So these two sets are equal. And now, this is unlike the previous, so a, uh, the previous question, because uh, A bar in the previous question need not be contained in Y. This is why we took the intersection. And we can give examples, actually. Okay. Try to come up with an example in the real line. For example, take 
x equal r and y, let us say, equal 0, 1, open, or 0, infinity. And uh, C, okay. So there is a little bit dif a difference here. So a circle intersected with y is always equal to a circle. Now, this is an open subset of y because it's the intersection with y of an open set in the bigger space x. But a circle y is the biggest open subset of y contained in A. Therefore, we have a circle is contained in a circle y. Okay. Now, we have to give an example where this inclusion is strict. So, take for example x equal r. You can always uh, try to uh, give examples and counter examples with what you already know, r or r2 or rn. So take x equal r and y equal a equal the rational numbers. Okay, let us see. What is a circle? A circle is the interior of the rational numbers in r, and we know that this is empty. However, a circle sub y is q circle sub q, because a equal y here. And this is what? This is the interior of Q relative to itself. And Q is open in itself. So this set is just Q. Okay? So this is empty and this is Q. So we don't have equality. Another example. Take X equal R, Y equal 0, 1. And A uh, equal the semi-open interval 0. Open at 1, closed at 0. Okay, what is a circle? A circle is the open interval 0, 1, as we know. Whereas, uh, we already observed when we talked about the subspace topology that A is open in Y. <clears throat> okay, because we can write A, for example, as the intersection of Y and the open interval minus 1 plus 1, or the open interval minus 1 half 1. We already observed that. So since y, A is open in uh, Y, then its interior with respect to Y is A. So it's equal to the semi-open interval 0, 1. So uh, we don't have uh, equality. So this is the open interval 0, 1. This is the semi-open interval 0. <coughs> okay, so you can always come up with examples. And as an exercise, Try to take, in these examples, what is a bar y and a bar? Try to uh, see what happens here. And in general, a bar y is not equal to a bar. So we can all take these examples as to see what happens in the previous question. Okay, so this concludes exercise 24. 25. It's an exercise about the product topology. So we have two topological spaces, X and Y, and you have a subset A of X and the subset B of Y. You have to show that the closure of the product is the product of the closures. Okay, how do I prove that? Double enclosure. Okay, we already proved in the lectures that the product of two closed sets is closed in the product topology, okay, because the complement is open. So, therefore, A bar times B bar is a closed set in the product containing, of course, A times B. And since the closure of A times B is the smallest closed set containing A times B, so as usual, this is the usual argument that you should master. So, A bar times B bar contains A times B bar. Okay, now the converse. Take an element in A bar times B bar, call it X. Y, so coordinates x, y. So, so therefore, this means that small x is an A bar and small y is an B bar. So by proposition 1.8, any neighborhood u of x meets a and any neighborhood v of small y meets b. Therefore, for any neighborhood uh, u of x and v of y, the product, this is the open rectangle, this is what we call the open rectangle. So the open rectangle u times v meets a times b, okay, because this is just 
U intersect with A, times V intersected with B. So if U meets A and V meets B, the product meets the product, as you mean. This is just that theory. Okay, but every neighborhood of small xy contains an open rectangle. And this open rectangle contains a set of the form U times V. Therefore, any neighborhood of xy meets A times B. And by proposition 1.8, this means that X belongs to the closure of A times B. Okay. So U cross V, these are uh, what you call open rectangles. They are building blocks, if you like, of the topology. Okay. So they play the same role as balls in a matrix space. Okay, so this concludes exercise 25. Exercise 26, you should be all familiar with this because we did something very similar, but instead of uh, dealing with arbitrary metric spaces, we dealt with just R to the N, which is R times R times R. Uh, okay, but this this is the same idea. Okay, so we have here N metric spaces. They need not be equal. They could be anything. And we consider their product that you denote by capital X. So a capital X is the set of N tuples, where each component belongs to the corresponding space. Now, if you have two n tuples, small x, small y, so with their coordinates, we set row 1 of xy to be the sum of di xi yi. Okay. So this is because now xi yi, uh, xi is in capital xi, yi is in capital xi. So this is the distance on capital xi. So we take the sum of the distances. Row 2 is what you can call the Euclidean distance, same thing. And we have row infinity, which is the maximum among all of these. So, actually, I stated that in the lectures, but I didn't prove. So, we have to prove that row 1, row 2, and row infinity are distances or matrix on X, and they are topologically equivalent. So, they generate, and they generate this the product topology on X. Okay. So, First point, why are they, why they are distances? Okay. The first three properties of a distance should be clear enough. So non-negative, because each component is non-negative. So it's zero if and only if, for example, you have, but in the exam, you have to write it. You have to write all the details. But, it, but we did something very similar, so I'm not going to repeat. You can do it orally. Row 1 is 0 if and only if all these terms are 0 because this is the sum of non-negative terms. So it's 0 if and only if all terms vanish. But if di x i y i vanishes, then x i equal y i for every i. Therefore, x equal y. And symmetry should be clear. Same thing for this. Now, the only non-trivial point is the triangular inequality. So uh, I will just do it for row 1. And you do it for row 2 and row infinity. Okay? Just copy and paste uh, uh, the proof and the lectures. Okay, now, since each di is a distance, we can write the triangle inequality. So we take three uh, points, three n tuples x, y, z of coordinates x, i, y, i, z, i. And we write the triangle inequality for, for d sub i, which is the distance on the i space. And now we just do the summation over i, because if this is true for every i, I just do the sum. The sum here gives me row 1 of xz, the second one gives me row 1 of xy, and the third summation gives me row 1 of yz, so that's it. For row infinity, actually I did it, I wrote it anyway, so we just write the same uh, triangle equality for the i, and each di is less than the corresponding maximum, okay? So this term is less than the maximum, which is row infinity of x, y. And this term is less than the maximum, so the sum is less than the sum. So this is an upper bound, if you like. And when I take the maximum here, I get the maximum of di, x, i, z, i over i is less than the sum of these two maxima. And therefore, I get uh, row infinity of x, z less than row infinity of x, y plus row infinity of y z. Okay. Uh, for row 2, 
I it's a little bit more delicate because I have to use a special inequality, which is Cauchy Schwarz. So I write first the triangle inequality for each di, and then I, I take the square. So the square of this is less than the di x i y i plus this one raised to the power two. And when I expand, I get di squared plus this di squared plus twice the product. And twice the product is less than, by cauchy schwarz less than the sum of di to the power one half plus etc. And when I do the computations, I should get finally rho 2 of xz less than rho 2 of xy plus rho. You do the, so just, just the i. Okay. So it's very elementary. You should be able to do it. But you have to, so it's a good exercise to train yourself in writing properly. Uh, okay. So that's the first point. We have, so all these uh, formulas define distance. Okay. Now, why are they topologically equivalent? It's exactly what, uh, like what we did in the lectures, okay? Because we can easily prove that rho infinity is less than rho one, because this is the maximum and this is the sum, and everything is not negative. And rho one is less than n times rho infinity, so this should be trivial. For rho two, get rho infinity less than rho two, and rho two less than radical n rho infinity. So we did something very similar. You do it. So this means that uh, actually rho 1, rho infinity, and rho 2 are not just topologically equivalent, they are Lipschitz equivalents, which is something stronger than topologically equivalent. Okay, so it's now it's just enough. The third point is take one of them, the simplest one. For me, it's rho infinity. And just have to prove that rho infinity defines or generates the product topology. Okay, this is not completely trivial. Okay, so how do I prove that? Double inclusion. Okay. <clears throat> the open ball, BAR, uh, actually, I should draw it B, B sub infinity. Okay, but I didn't write it here. So instead of writing B rho infinity, I just write B, B infinity, B sub infinity. Okay, so, so this is the open ball. Uh, in the product, of course, with respect to rho infinity of center A, A now is a non-tuple, okay, and R is a uh, just positive real number, okay. Now, if O is an open subset in the product topology, so here I'm proving that uh, the product, so double inclusion, I'm proving that the product topology is contained in T rho infinity. How do I prove that? I take an open subset in the product topology and prove that it is in T rho infinity or it's open for re in, rho infinity. How do I know that it's open for rho infinity? I pick an arbitrary point X in O. And of course, this point is an untuple because O lives in the product uh, space. And I have to prove to find a ball of center X with respect to rho infinity totally contained in O. So I go back to the definition. If O is open for the product topology, this means, and X is an O. By definition, this means that I can find an open rectangle, okay, which is a product of open sets, okay, that, that contains X and is contained in O. This is the definition of the product topology. So I didn't invent anything. Okay. So now, for each I, so X X has components X1, X2, Xn. And in, if X is in this rectangle, then each component of X belongs to the corresponding U sub I. So Xi belongs to U sub I. But U sub I is open in Xi. Okay? So by definition of the metric this, uh, topology, there exists a ball. Okay, I, I didn't specify, but this is the ball with respect to Di. So I have to be more precise, and so because here we are working in the ith space x sub i, okay. So small x i is an element in uh, the ith space x sub i, and and it belongs to u i, and u i is open in x i. So I can find a ball 
So write please here B D I, right? And here write B infinity. Okay. And they 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 live in completely different spaces. This ball lives in the product, whereas this ball lives in the ith factor. So this is B D I. Okay. And so I have n numbers r1, r2, r, and I take their minimum because it's a finite number. And now, what what is b infinity of xr? As you may check, this is the distance with the ball with respect to rho infinity. Okay. If you go back to the definition, this is the set of y of n tuples y whose distance with respect to rho infinity uh, to x is less than r. So the maximum is less than r. This means that each one of the distances is less than ri. Okay, so it's easy to check that the ball for uh, b in, for rho infinity is just the product of these balls, bdi. And since bdi is contained in ui, their product is contained in the product. So this is actually uh, something very similar to what we did in the lectures when uh, we said that the ball for rho infinity was a square. Okay, so here the ball rho infinity is a product of balls, something very similar. Okay, so this con so this concludes the first impl uh, inclusion. So we took an element O in the product topology, then we took a point in the set O, and we, we found a ball for rho infinity. Of center x totally contained in O. So this proves that O is open for rho infinity. So this is one inclusion. So product topology is contained in T rho infinity. So now we have just to prove the converse. So take now an open set for rho infinity and prove that it's open for the product topology. How do I prove that it's open for the product topology? I go back to the definition of the product topology. So I consider an element x and O of components x1, xn. And since O is open for rho infinity, we can find a ball with respect to rho infinity that I denote by rho b infinity of center x contained in O. But as we denoted, uh, as we... Um, <clears throat> actually, this is not ri, this is r. Okay, so B rho infinity is the product of these balls. Okay, so it's a square, if you like. And so B infinity, which is open for rho infinity, is actually what we call an open rectangle. So this is why actually I took rho infinity rather than uh, the other one, because uh, the, the, the reasoning is a little bit simpler. Okay. So we took an element X and O, and we found an open rectangle containing x and contained an o and therefore o is open for the product topology so i know this can be a little bit confusing for the first time but you can watch the video several times and check the details but please uh, this is b sub infinity we can write b rho infinity if you like this i just to i had to simplify it a bit and this is not ri, this is r. Okay, so this is the same identity. Okay, so b, b infinity xr is the product from i equal 1 to n of bdi, if you like, this is bdi, uh, of center xi and radius r. Okay. So this concludes exercise 26. The last exercise, very easy, could be an examination question. We take, uh, we have a metric space XD and we equip the product with row one, just the distance here, the sum of the distances. Now, as you may uh, check, this is not really important. You can take the maximum or the Euclidean. So this is just, uh, so use the distance with which you feel comfortable, actually. It's not a big deal because it's the same, top not the same distance, but the same topology, actually. So we have to prove now that the diagonal, which is the set of all couples of the form xx, where small x is in the space capital X, is closed in the product. Okay, how do, I, how do I prove that a set is closed? There are at least two strategies. Either I prove that its complement is open, so I go back to the definition, which is possible, 
or I prove that it's equal to its closure by proving that it contains its closure. Okay? Uh, you can try both, actually. But I find here that uh, the second strategy is a little bit uh, easier to work with. So, take... <clears throat> okay, but first let us observe this fact, which is should be expected, actually. If I have two sequences, Tn and SNX, such that the couple TNSN converges to TS, then each component can converge to the corresponding component. So TNSN converges to TS, actually, if and only if, the first component converges to the first component, and the second component converges to the second component. And this is true even if uh, uh, I had two arbitrary spaces, x times y. Okay. So, and this is something that, this is not a surprise, actually. But why this is so? This is the proof. A row, what we call row one, actually, we call it here row, the, the distance between two couples, Tn, Sn, and Ts, is just the sum of the distances, Tn, T plus Sn, S. So if Tn converges to T in X, this tends to zero, and if Sn converges to S in X, this tends to zero, so the sum tends to zero, therefore this distance tends to zero. Now the converse, if row of Tn, Sn, Ts, so if Tn, Sn converges to Ts, this tends to zero, but this is bigger than row of Tn, T, which is between zero and this guy, and same thing for the second one. So if this tends to zero, this tends to zero by the Sandwich theorem. <clears throat> okay, so and this is a fact that you can always use, okay, you don't need to prove it every time. Okay, so I will use this fact, this is why I started by this observation, actually. I didn't say it explicitly in the lecture, but this is something that you can deduce easily. Okay, now I prove that delta is closed. So I prove, I take an element in delta bar and prove that it's in delta. Okay, so, so I, I use here, of course, proposition 1.8. If x, y is in, uh, of course, I have to take a couple because delta lives in the product. So I take a couple x, y, uh, contained in delta bar, and by proposition 1.8, there exists a sequence, x n, y n, in delta that converges to x y. So, now, if uh, the sequence in delta is necessarily of the form x n, x n, because if you call it x n, y n, then necessarily y n equal x n, because this is the definition of delta, the second component equal to the first component. So this implies that xn converges to x and yn or xn, same thing, converges to y. Okay. And now it's very easy to conclude that x equal y by also an expected fact, which is known as limit, uh, uniqueness of limits. Okay. And this fact, actually, now I'll talk a little bit about it. So, okay, so by uniqueness of limits, we must have x equal y, and therefore xy is in delta, because xy equal xx. So we prove that every point in delta bar is contained in delta, so we have equality, so delta is closed. So I think this is a little bit easier than to prove that the complement of delta is open. Okay, this is the advantage of working in metric space, because we can use sequences. Okay. Now, uh, for those who are a little bit uh, meticulous, uh, you may ask why do you have uniqueness of limits? I will give this fact. Uh, uniqueness of limits is not true in all topological spaces. So this may be a surprise a little bit. And in arbitrary topological spaces, uh, you'll see that next year, a sequence may converge to several points. But this cannot happen in metric spaces. And I will tell you why. So I will end just with a distance. Why we have uniqueness of limits. So if the limit exists, it is unique. So suppose that we have a sequence xn converge, uh, converging to two distinct points x and y. Okay, then the distance between x and y is strictly positive. Call it r. Now it's easy to prove that the ball of center x and radius r over two, and the ball of center y and radius r over two are disjoint. Okay, because I'm taking the open balls actually. Uh, this should be also intuitively clear. Uh, how do you prove that? We can reason by contradiction, actually. If, we, if the intersection was not empty, then there is a point Z in the intersection. Now, 
the distance from x to z should be less than r over 2, and the distance from z to y should be strictly less than r over 2. So when I take the sum and use the triangle inequality, I get the distance between x and y is less than r over 2 plus r over 2, strictly, which is r. So I get r less than itself. Okay, and so now we'll get a contradiction. Since xn converges to x, then we know that starting from a certain rank n1, xn will be in the ball of center x and radius r over 2. And since, x, since xn converges to y, then starting from another index n2, xn will be in the second ball. So if I take n to be less than the maximum of n1 and n2, then xn will be in the intersection, but the intersection is empty, and this is a contradiction. So uh, this is, you, you may say that this is trivial, but this is actually an important fact. And uh, this property of, so here, the, the point is that I can separate x from y by two disjoint neighborhoods. Okay? This property of separation uh, does not hold in an arbitrary topological space. Uh, topological space is that where this condition holds are called Hausdorff spaces, and you will learn them next year. Okay, so this concludes exercise 27, and therefore the video, and therefore chapter 1. So thank you for your attention, and see you in the next chapter. And have a nice vacation.